I'll say this. You know, you see, I always look on the uh, Bachelor subreddits, the Facebook groups, just to see what people are saying about an episode. I probably wouldn't care too much other than it's nice to see what the dissenting opinions are or the you know group think is going into these types of seasons. And then I did see somebody who says, and again, we're referencing Ivan's conversation with Tasha. They have a conversation about being biracial in Southern California, about trying to fit in, about Black Lives Matter movement. And um, apologies for my woke Southerners. But I just like it's an easy accent um, for me to mess up. Uh, but they're always like, I don't know. I just I just come to Bachelorette because I want to unwind. I don't want all this talks about politics. When did human rights become politics? When did everyone wanting equality become politics? You know what I mean? And this was the same thing when um, Kylan Kaepernick took a knee, um, you know, to protest against police brutality. I don't know. I just want to watch football so I can get away from politics. It sounds like you just want to find places to not confront the uh, issues we still have in our country. And like we were talking about, having diverse opinions and a diverse culture comes with not needing everything to be watered down to appease certain people. You know, you live on a cul-de-sac, you might not have the marches, the rallies in your face. I can't completely understand, of course. But living in Hollywood and having lived in Harlem and having lived in um, a, a Mexican neighborhood in Boston, I've, I've always lived in, in, in the outer fringes of cities. Um, it's more of a socioeconomic decision. I think we would all love to live in a nice gated house in Beverly Hills. Wouldn't we all love a nice pool? But hey, when you're living uh, uh, outside the cusp of that, you are in a mixed community. I mean, our buildings got um, everything from um, interracial couples, uh, gay couples, uh, a tran there's a trans lady who lives downstairs. I mean, it's like it couldn't be a more diverse melting pot. You put anybody in the world, you put Garrett in this building for one year, just checking the mail, you're going to get it more of a culture, you know, uh, 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 mixture than you would, um, you know, five years, you know, hunting quail with your buddies. Not to say hunting quail is bad. Grew, grew up in an all white school. Two black guys moved in, immediately became the stars of our football team. We had two black guys. If it wasn't for the Naval War College being in our hometown, we would never have diversity because that's just what it was. So there's no fault to people that didn't grow up with diversity or differencing of opinions or this or that. There's no fault to anybody. But the point is, when given the chance to listen to other conversations, take it. When given the, maybe not during COVID, but the idea is like, like having lived in New York City, I actually, and, and again, this could just be my own, my own um, recounting, but living in New York, I felt like much less racial tension and divide than living in Los Angeles. And Los Angeles is a very isolating city. It's very segmented. I mean, you've got Tight Town, Little Armenia, Little Ethiopia, um, uh, uh, Tokyo, town, whatever. You've got all these little areas, and it's a melting pot. Like, we live in Koreatown, the highest Korean population outside of North or South Korea. Um, but there's also a ton of um, uh, Mexican American strap hanger you know it's a crowded subway it's hot the ac's off you're swaying you're bouncing you're just hitting some you know some on one end you got some tall dude so you're just hitting his waist and on the other end you got some ladies boobs one it's just you're rattling off of each other you know what i mean you like that that's my dance moves by the way it's just rattling off each other um so anyway you you know in, in some scenarios that people go wow well, it's all all these Major cities are just, they're all these Democratic-run major cities. Or are they Democratic-run because of the diversity that lives within those hubs? I don't know. Again, not to make it political. I just, I come to your recaps not to deal with politics. It's hard to untangle it all. Um, Leslie said, Dave, are you a New England Catholic? Lapsed? What does lapsed mean? I was raised Catholic in New England. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get back to some of these comments. Um... U.S. Uh, 834 said media portrayals are a huge help, too. I remember then including it in How to Get Away with Murder. Well, yeah, well, How to Get Away with Murder is a, um, uh, it's Shonda Rhimes, right? She's a, a black showrunner, and a showrunner is the most powerful position in Hollywood. It's the person who makes the projects, like Chuck Lorre is a powerful showrunner, right, who did um, Two and a Half Men and and Rhonda Shimes does uh, How to Get Away with Murder and a couple others. Yeah, I've, I've done, I've worked some crew, crew jobs on that show. And yeah, it's super diverse. And the diversity is there. Um, and again, I'm not trying to get into these conversations of, um, you know, um, make you know, affirmative, whatever. The, the point is, is that when it comes to just listening to a conversation when it exists, 
enjoy it with just a fresh, I don't know, like eating a new dish of food. Because what you realize with Ivan and, and Tasha is that the conversation's not, not that foreign. It's not that foreign. You could probably empathize with it in, in your own certain way when you felt like you didn't belong or, or, or this or that. And now I know Rachel, of course, Rachel Lindsay, first black bachelorette from a few years ago, she had mentioned that she wanted Tasha to go farther in on the conversation. And look, Rachel, lo- love her. I think nothing will ever be good enough for her. For Tasha to be on national TV and even be talking about Black Lives Matter must be very challenging. Lesia said, lapsed just means you're no longer practicing or like CE Catholics. You only show up for Christmas and Easter. Uh, yeah, I would, I would go with that. I'm not a practicing Catholic. Um, I feel like Catholicism, at least w- where I grew up, is it's kind of like Judaism, right? You're, you can be like culturally Catholic. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, if you, if you want to ask me any questions about it, go for it. I just... You know, I'm not one of those guys that was like royally um, messed up from a childhood or anything. It's just uh, I'm more spiritual, I think, now than anything. There are teachings that are good within the Catholic Church. I have an uncle who's a Catholic priest. Uh, There's also, of course, you know, any any organization is going to be riddled with, you know, if like um, if like Joel Austin's church was as big as the Catholic Church globally, you'd probably have just as many issues of complete. BS going on, but instead you get some like pastor in South Carolina blows a guy in an airport and it's like, all right, that's one and done. But when you attach the Catholic church to it, not to mention all the um, instances of, of course, um, you know, sweeping things under the rug still to this day, it's going to be a long road to repair. Um, but anyways, if you have any questions about the, uh, my experience or my beliefs, I'm happy to share them. I don't know if it's pertinent to the discussion of Ivan and Tasha, <laughs> Maybe it is. Jessica said, nothing is even good enough for Rachel. She's so judgmental about uh, everything. I like her overall. Yeah, and you know, being judgmental is not a bad thing when you're in her position. I mean, you have to remember, they are trying to make entertaining content. With Rachel, uh, you know, she's got she's to make content. It's just like these cable news shows. They, they need content every day. So so I do understand when they're trying to like poke at things. And, and Rachel, she probably did want Tasha to talk more, but Tasha like let her have, but I think it was a big first step for her to have a real sincere conversation with Ivan. And, and I think by like, she was sort of biting her lip about her points of view. I think it was good to show that she was kind of hesitant to share. And I think it made it just that much more, um, uh, less agenda, agenda driven. You know what I mean? If she showed up and was like, okay, so part one of my, uh, you know, it would be kind of be like, all right, what are you trying to push here? Versus her actually being like, here's my story. Here's where I struggle with fitting in. And then, of course, Rachel, as the lawyer that she is, kind of um, cross-examines Tasha and says a lot of, you know, she's like, well, why do you feel like you have to fit in? Is it because you want to be white? And it's this and that. It's like, well, I think it's natural in any society to want to fit in. I mean, look at Madonna. She moves to England and she's got a British accent three days later. It's natural to want to uh, mimic others vicariously. You know, you get in a relationship, you start talking like the other person, you start sharing this group kind of mind. Anyway, let's move on. Um, what did, so Jessica said, um, uh, Lesia disagrees, which is fine. It's healthy. We can all disagree. She said, I think she uses her voice and platform to try to move the conversation and make things better. Even if that means disrupting things or making people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Look, I mean, there's times I side with Rachel and times I side against her. I've, I've thought with some issues with like Garrett, you know, and certain things that like, you know, you could be more compassionate to learn how to communicate with people versus slam them. Same, same gripe I've had with Becca, Becca with a K-H, is that her name, Becca? Am I pronouncing that right? Maybe No, Becca, a l- little bit. So sometimes you got to make someone an example to really... Now, the, the question is, is when does a pendulum swing too far? When does someone get a raw deal? Plenty of times, a lot of these, um, you know, villains of the show get a raw deal. We haven't really seen a villain since Yosef Yusuf left. Yosef Yusuf. By the way, shout out to Oz. You're not here, and I, I feel like I didn't do you, do you good and get you enough of a heads up to, to join the conversation, so I apologize. Oz, if you didn't know we were doing a morning recap here today, um, it's okay that you couldn't fit us into your schedule. I don't want to make it sound like, a, where are you, Oz? Um, I'm going to play a few voicemails here. Let me see. Um, someone says they agree with Rachel, honestly. It felt like it was a missed opportunity for a necessary conversation with an audience that is finally starting to pay attention to racial issues. Yeah, well, and but look, you got to look at it. 
in Tasha's shoes, she, you know, she didn't know she was going to have that conversation. She didn't know that it was going to go there. So, you know, it can be very tough for people as charming and as outgoing as Tasha seems. She's not like a known public speaker. She's, you know, she was on a dating reality show, kind of thrown into, into this conversation where she might normally have a decent opinion, but knowing the size of her platform right now, I'm sure she's kind of like, all right, how do I say what I want? Because so much of communication is knowing how you feel in here and in here and getting it out of your mouth. And some people are better at that than others. And it doesn't mean like, it doesn't mean someone is smarter than someone else. It's just some people are better at literally the art of saying what they, they think eloquently and getting it out. And he said, I saw it had this, it was their first real date and they will go more in depth as their relationship progresses. Maybe, I don't think their relationship is going to progress much. I could be wrong. I feel like they had a deep connection, but I don't know if, it's really hard to read Tasha, don't you guys think? She's so sweet to everybody. All right, I'm going to play a voicemail. Let's see if I can get this voicemail going. <laughs> 